Before we start the video, let me give you a brief introduction about myself. I'm Chandresh Mahajan, who is founder and chief educator at Exergic, which is India's most trusted and comprehensive institute for online gate preparation. I got an All India Rank 37 from Gate Mechanical Engineering and I am an ex-Indian Oil Officer, having 6 plus years of teaching experience as of now. To know more about our Gate courses, you can contact us on these details. Also, you can download Exergic Gate Preparation app from Google Play Store. The link is available in the description of video. Now have a look at this problem. The problem says that a cart starts to move down the inclined plane at t is equal to 0. So look at this diagram here. You can see that there is an inclined plane. The inclination angle is not given in the language of the question, but it is given in the diagram 15 degree, right? Over which there is a block. This block is a cart, okay, like a vehicle. The mass of that is also given to you in the diagram. So it starts to move down the inclined plane at t is equal to 0. So at time t is equal to 0, it started the motion okay, with 20 meter per second velocity. So the initial velocity, let's call it v0 is equal to 20 meter per second. It is also mentioned here, v0 is equal to 20 meter per second in the downward direction, down the inclined plane. At the same instant means at t is equal to 0 itself. At the same instant of time, the force P begins to act as shown. Again, you refer to the diagram. You can see that there is a force P acting. This force P is acting up the inclined plane. Okay. After 5 seconds means from starting from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 5 seconds in this duration. Sorry, after this duration, the force continues at 50 Newton level. So this force P which is being applied, it is applied with some variation. And this graph is also given to you in the question. This graph is between the time and the value of force P in Newton bracket. In bracket N is written which represents Newton. You can see that at t is equal to 0, force P is also 0. Initially, the force is 0, just at t is equal to 0. But as the time proceeds, the value of P also keeps on increasing. How it varies? Parabolically, in a parabolic manner, it increases. Up to which point it increases? Up to the value of 50 Newton, it increases. And after that, it becomes constant. It maintains the same level of 50 Newton. That is what the question is saying and after 5 seconds, the force continues at 50 Newton level. So after 5 seconds means at 5 seconds, it reaches 50 Newton level and after that it remains the same 50 Newton. Okay. The velocity of cart at t is equal to 8 seconds and the time t at which cart velocity becomes 0 will be how much? So basically this question had options. I have removed the options but options will be something like this. A, B, C, D, four options were there. Firstly, you have to tell the velocity of cart at t is equal to 8 second. So some meter per second will be the velocity and the time t at which cart velocity becomes 0. So some value in seconds at which the velocity becomes zero. This is how options were framed. First number was the velocity asked earlier at t zero to eight second. Second part was the time when the cart velocity becomes zero respectively. This is how four options were framed. I have removed them so that you try them on your own and don't take any hint from the options. So start the question. Look, whenever you see such questions, the problem maximum aspirants face in general in mechanics especially in this part of mechanics that they don't know where to start from if they look at the solution they find it easy that it was very much doable we can solve it easily there was nothing difficult in the solution but when they look at the question they are not able to understand 
that how do I start this question? How do I approach this question? Question seems easy. All the data is almost given to us, but I am not sure what to apply. Which expression to apply? Should I go with conservation of momentum? Should I go with the law of, uh, of conservation of energy or Newton's uh, laws? Should I apply? What exactly should I apply and should I start from? They don't know it yet. They do hit and trial. Okay, that is what many aspirants do in mechanics, especially in this part. I will give you a very super tip to overcome this hurdle, this difficulty. Look at what is given to you in the question and don't look, write it. What I mean to say is that in this question, you can clearly see that force is given to you. The question is definitely talking about force. Correct. What is the other thing that is given to you? Time. Just look at this graph, force and time variation it is talking about. So time is also given to you. What is the other parameter that is talked about in the question? Velocity. Velocity is given 20 meter per second. When the velocity will become zero that is asked at what time? So third is velocity. These three things are given to you in the question. Those of you who face trouble in starting the question, in not knowing how to approach the question, should definitely use this funda initially until you become a master in this. Write them down and then think with this given data, what expression should I apply? Which approach can I go with? What do you think? What is a suitable expression that includes them? Impulse momentum equation. Impulse momentum equation is the equation of impulse which is force multiplied by time and the momentum which includes velocity as well. Mass is also given to you here, right? So using impulse moment, momentum equation, you can relate force with the time, with velocity. Obviously, mass is there. So that should give you a hint that, okay, this is the expression or uh, relation that I should start with. Maybe, just maybe, question will require some other approach. Then don't worry, you can try some other ways as well. But at least write down such general things, force, time, acceleration, whatever is given to you in the question. And then think that which of the expression or which approach will be most suitable for the given data, for the given information and then accordingly proceed. It will make things easier for you because not many expressions are there in mechanics, right? Mechanics is a subject which is not very intensive in the expression like some other subjects of mechanical engineering. You have to know very basic expressions, right? But application of those expressions is tricky, is something that requires an aptitude, technical aptitude, right? And these things, these tips will definitely help you in starting and finishing a question, okay? So with this discussion, let us start uh, our solution knowing in our mind that we have to apply impulse momentum equation. If you want to apply impulse momentum equation, you need to have the expression of force with respect to time, right? Variation is known to you. This is P in Newton, right? Variation is known to you. You also need to know the expression. For this part, expression is very easy. That the value of P is equal to 50 Newton when time is more than 5 seconds. More than equal to 5 seconds. But what about when the time is more than 0 but less than 5? What about this duration? It is a parabolic curve. Right? So first thing that you should do is try to find out the expression, the mathematical expression for variation of P with respect to T. And you can do it. Very easily you can do it. Let's see how. Let's assume for now that force P is varying by A T square plus B. Let's say this is the parabolic variation, general parabolic variation of force P with time T. A and B are unknowns right now, but these are some constants. 
we know boundary conditions right two boundary conditions are known to us if this is a plot of p comma t right or t comma p you can write of t comma p t is on x p is on y right x comma y so at t is equal to 0 p is 0 at t is equal to 5 p is 50 these two values are known to us if we put these two values here we will get two expressions right two equations and we have two unknowns a and b we can easily solve it to find the values of a and b if we put t is equal to 0 p is equal to 0 case 1 p is equal to 0 t is equal to 0 this will give you the value of b as 0 and if we put the other boundary condition that at t is equal to 5 it is 0 p is equal to 50 so this will, will be 25 a will be equal to 2 so b and a both these values we have found out if we put them back into this expression it will be p is equal to 2 t square that's it this is the required expression the parabolic variation of force p with respect to time t during the interval of 0 to 5 seconds so if we want to write that we can definitely write that p is equal to 2t square when t is from 0 to 5 and p is equal to 50 when t is more than 5 obviously these two values are in Newton so we know the expression of p with respect to t and now let us apply the impulse momentum equation for this entire motion from 0 up to how much time up to 8 seconds because first part of the question is asking you to find the velocity of cart at t is equal to 8 second so from 0 to 8 let me assume that 8 is somewhere here so from t is equal to 0 to 8 we know the total variation of p with respect to t and now we need to find out the velocity using impulse momentum equation let us do that now to apply the impulse momentum equation for this mass we need to define the direction along which we are going to write or along which we are going to define the impulse momentum equation this whole motion and forces and velocity are along this direction right force is acting along this the velocity is also along this so as i have told you that for such cases we can align them the x and y axis as per the incline rather than the conventional horizontal and vertical x can be taken along the incline y can be taken perpendicular to the incline correct now for this case along x direction we have to uh, consider this equation because as i told you forces velocity everything is along the incline okay so using impulse momentum equation along x direction along x axis we can write this that the impulse along x direction is equal to mass multiplied by final velocity along x direction minus initial velocity along x direction note that the direction of x is like this like this right that will be used when we will be writing this equation any force or any velocity against this arrow against the x direction will be taken as negative right so for this case let us write let us find out i x first impulse along x direction first okay what are the different forces acting to calculate the impulse because for impulse you need force and multiplied by the time duration during which that force is acting so firstly it is important to know how many forces are acting visibly only one force is acting p this is the silly mistake that some of you can do you will forget about the weight the weight of the block is also there mass of 6 kg is present right so this mass of 6 kg will be having a weight component along this direction right 
we already know that if the mass is m, mg will act in this direction, mg cos theta will act in this direction perpendicular to the incline, mg sin theta will act in this direction down the incline. So mg sin theta, the component sin component of weight is also acting. So both of these forces we will consider. mg sin theta is a constant force. So during the whole duration of 8 seconds, why I am saying 8 seconds? Because you need to find out the velocity at the end of 8 seconds. So during this 8 second interval, weight is a constant force in the downward direction. Right? So it will just a straight line. This is varying, P is varying, but weight versus time will be constant line. But P is varying like this. As I have taught you that if some graph is given to you between force and time, impulse is nothing but the area under that graph right with the time axis so for this case for the case of p and t let us calculate impulse first and then we will calculate it for the weight and then we will take their summation so for the p force this area is needed to be calculated the area under the curve with time t right up to 8 seconds how you can do it this area can be very easily calculated. It is just a rectangle. But this is a parabolic area. Although we know the formula for parabolic, uh, this uh, shape as well, for parabolic area as well. But let us go with the basics and apply the integration. Integration can be used to find out this area under the parabolic curve. Right? So impulse along x direction you need to calculate, which will be integration of net forces acting let me write it as right from t is equal to 0 to 8 seconds what are the net forces acting multiplied by dt in this case the variation is from 0 to 5 in one step then it is a constant for the next step just for p force i am talking about the weight i have not taken yet right so for p the variation will be from 0 to 5 during this duration, as we know, P is equal to 2T square. So, 2T square dt. This integration will give you this area under the parabolic curve. Plus, this area is simply a rectangle, right? This 3 multiplied by 50. So 50 multiplied by 3. This is 3, 8 minus 5. This is giving you what? This is giving you the impulse of P force. Now there is one thing to note here that P force here is acting in the same direction as X. X is upwards, P is also upwards. That is why the sign is positive. We have not taken the negative sign. But this component of weight, mg sin theta will be negative because it is acting in the opposite direction of X. X is upward, mg sin theta will be downward. There will be a minus sign here mg m is 6 g is 9.81 if nothing is mentioned in the question multiplied by sin theta theta is 15 sin 15 degrees this is our expression which will give us ix impulse along x this left part that you will equate with the right part and hopefully we can find out the unknown velocity after the end of 8 seconds so if we integrate it this is going to be 2 by 3 t cube from 0 to 5 plus 150 minus we will need calculator to find it out. So this is 125 and upon cancelling, upon simplifying it, we will get 111.46 Newton second. This is the value of left hand side. About the right hand side, let us calculate it. Mass is 6, direct. What is Vx2? Vx2 is the final velocity. V2 means final. X means along x direction. So final velocity along x direction is required. That is what we need to find out. 
but initial velocity along x direction is known to us it is given to us in the equation it is nothing but v naught right so vx2 is needed to be found out but vx1 means initial velocity along x direction is v naught but with a minus sign it is minus 20 how because p sorry x is pointing upwards it is acting in the upward direction any force or velocity opposite to this will be taken as negative wherever it is getting used we have to use the initial velocity along x direction along x direction we are doing we are applying the impulse momentum equation but initial velocity is along minus x direction not plus x direction that is why a minus sign will be coming will be coming here these small things really matter even if you understood how to uh, means which expression to use how to proceed but if you miss these small details it will be difficult for you to get the question correct and a good rank right so be very sure that you not only know the expression but also any small details here and there about the question now this part is known to us this part is equal to ix ix is equal to 111.46 mass is here vx2 we need to find out this is plus 20 and if you simplify it you will get minus 1.423 meter per second this is the required answer minus sign tells that the velocity after the end of 8 second is still in the downward direction still along the negative x direction and it is very uh, it is something that you should understand that in this case weight is trying to move it down but a force p is acting in the upward direction which is slowly increasing and reaching a value of 50 right depending upon the magnitude of p a time may come when the block will not only stop because p is opposing it but also it may start moving upward in the upward direction depending upon the magnitude relative magnitude of p and weight these are the two forces interacting with each other right if p is more than the sine component of weight what will happen a time will come when it will not only overcome the downward motion but it will also start an upward motion so at the end of 8 second the body is still moving in the downward direction this is also a way in which question can be framed question can ask you that after after the end of 8 seconds will the body be moving in downward direction or not it can ask you that after the end of 8 second part a the cart is still moving down cart is moving up cart is at rest and the data is insufficient or any fourth option can be framed and this question can also be answered like this right either you can find out the time when it becomes zero and you compare eight seconds with that time or you can find out the velocity at eight seconds and see whether it is coming out to be zero or positive or negative right this is how the first part is solved now let us move to the second part of the question which asked you at, at what time the velocity of the cart will become zero same expression is needed to be applied impulse momentum equation is needed to be applied the only variation is that now we know the velocity we know the velocity and from that we need to find out the time let us do that now applying the impulse momentum equation again gives us this expression here how this time the variation will be from 0 to t seconds earlier it was from 0 to 8 because time was known to us final time was known to us in the first part that up to 8 second you need to find out the velocity at 8 second here time is not given but when velocity will become 0 is asked so t is unknown here so from 0 to that value of t at which velocity becomes 0 is taken here this t is not any random time this t is that time when velocity becomes 0 okay now we integrate it here if you look this that time may be here or somewhat ahead of this time of 8 second how do i know that the time will be more than 8 
I just told you few seconds back that it is still moving down. It will stop and then move up. So the time of stop will obviously come after the time when it is still moving down. Are you understanding? At t is equal to 8 seconds, it is still moving down. So obviously, maybe at 9 seconds or 10 seconds, it is going to stop. Right? So that time will be more than 8. So from that knowledge, what I can do? I can again integrate it from 0 to t. From 0 to 5, the same expression I have written. And for this rectangle now, because this rectangle now is from 5 to t, the area is 50 means this multiplied by this, which is t minus 5. So 50 multiplied by t minus 5, right? Minus the weight component, the same one acting in the downward direction, that is why taken as negative, means acting opposite to x, that is why taken as negative. And now it is multiplied by t, total time. Earlier it was multiplied by 8, since it is acting constantly throughout the time. Now let us simplify it. This will give you the same value 2 by 3 multiplied by 125. This will be 50 and minus 5 will be minus 250 plus 50t and minus w sign 15t. So let's take t as common. 50 minus w is mg, m is 6, g is 9.81 sine 15. This is our expression and this is ix. This has to be equated to m vx2 minus vx1. m is 6, i in place of i, I am writing m vx2 minus vx1. Mass is 6, final velocity, this is 0. That is what question is asking. And when the final velocity becomes 0, what will be the time? And initial velocity is same as 20, again with a minus sign. So minus of minus 20. And now in this whole expression, t is the only unknown. So when you solve it, you can easily do it using calculator. You will get time is equal to 8.24 seconds. This is your answer clearly more than 8, right? Because at t is equal to 8, it was still moving down. And just 0.24 seconds later, the velocity became 0. This is the required answer for the second part of the question. So don't just solve the question. Don't just go through the solution. Try to conclude something from questions. Not only from this question I am talking about, in general I am telling you. But for such questions, if I talk specifically, remember the initial tip that I gave you. This whole question, the whole solution was moving around impulse momentum equation. But if you will take time to understand that impulse momentum equation is needed to be applied or maybe you will not be able to figure out it, then the question can get, you know, lengthier for you, tedious for you. Use the initial tip that I gave you. Write down the general uh, parameters that are given to you and then try to think that what expression will be suitable here. This will definitely help you, especially those who are facing difficulty in starting a question. Okay.